Uh, the first thing on the agenda is public comment. Any public comment tonight? Bridget, I'm having some you, muting issues. Yeah. Uh, oh, hearing sorry, no I, public comment. Sorry. Hearing no public comment, uh, we'll turn to the consent agenda. I saw one item on the consent agenda, which was a resignation. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move to approve the consent agenda. I second it. Okay. Um, any discussion? All those in favor, um, we'll start with uh, Anaket. Aye. Jill. Aye. Derry. Aye. Mara. Aye. Okay. Uh, let's see. Going back to my agenda here. So the next thing on the agenda um, is board action requested to approve the COVID retirement options. And we have two of those that have been presented to us by the administration. Um, yes. So I can give you a quick background. Um, we have approximately four employees where if we can if we can design a way for them to get to uh, retirement by, and hold them harmless at the same time, then um, we can accommodate them in a way that I think this board wants to. Um, I have Grant here to answer any financial questions if you need. And notice Grant is still in his office at 6.33 at night. And I know he was there before I got there this morning at 7.15 this morning. So Grant needs to go home. Um, however, <laughs> um, this is a situation that Grant and I have worked out with our teachers union, um, and I think it's beneficial for four of our employees um, that does little, doesn't hurt the district um, very much at all financially and is a, is a good move for us. So I would recommend we, uh, or the board approves these items, but we're happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, and thanks thanks to Libby and Grant and the union and the rest of the administration. Clearly, you've put a lot of work and effort into this, and we all appreciate that. Grant, could you briefly address the financial impact on the district? Yeah, well, I mean, it's still a bit of an unknown because we don't know of those four. Um, we don't know if, uh, if they've got one year to go to meet Vister's retirement eligibility or eight months to go. So the specific dollar amount that this is going to cost us is still a bit up in the air. But as all of you know, we do have a very healthy fund balance that can absorb this. Um, the other thing is, uh, and Libby maybe can address this now that we know four specific teachers, whether or not we will need to backfill all four of those positions this year. If not, that would, that would also save a chunk of that money. And the other thing is there's a longer term savings because we undoubtedly will have new higher savings whenever we do replace these positions, which won't just help us out in the near term, but will help us out for several years. So yeah, there is a near term investment that we would absorb. Um, the specific dollar amount, I'm not sure of, but I would, I mean, I hate to say any, any guesses, but I can't imagine it would be, you know, much more than maybe $150,000, uh, It I would have to find out for sure whenever we we would have to contact Vistas, find out how much is required to buy them out to get them to the vested point. Um, but I mean, we're not talking about a million dollars. We're talking about something that's probably more in the 100,000 range, which I mean, right, right now I'm thinking we have probably about 1.6 million or so. And if you subtract out what we're gonna use as a revenue source for the next three years, um, we're still looking at maybe 900,000. Um, and our guidance is to try to keep that at about 2% of our budget, which is only about 480. So that's 420,000 that we still have available. And I think I'm being conservative, which Libby always accuses me of. 
Um, so I, I think we got plenty there. And, and honestly, I'm starting to get a little nervous because the AOE is starting to collect fund balance information on all school districts. And whatever their reason, it can't be good. Um, so if we end up reducing that fund balance in the near term, that might keep the wolves at bay a little bit. Um, and then we would benefit from that savings in future years, which, which um, could be very good for us. So I'm on board, Libby brought me into this right off the bat. So I think it's the right thing to do for the teachers. And I think it, it helps set us up um, for future years. I'm sorry, I don't have more specific, but we'll get more specific information fairly soon once we enter into these agreements and begin to talk to visitors. And the employee has to give us authority to talk to visitors. That's what's kind of holding us back now too. And as I think about it, we have five employees. So four, so you got two different retirement ideas. Um, four of our employees are within a year. So when you look at the one that's within a year, that could influence four of our employees who could retire mid-year, they could retire in May. That's the amount of time they need. We've already budgeted for those people. Um, and not all of them will will try to replace um, three out of the four of them. I, one of them will be very hard to replace and we don't know if we could. So we probably wouldn't replace her. Um, one teacher is potential for the actual buyout of the retirement that we're still not sure if she would take that deal or not. But, but that, there's only one person left after the people I've talked to. Um, I found an accommodation for everybody else in our district. So everybody who is high risk in our district assuming these high, these retirement deals fall, go through, we have found an accommodation that works for everybody in our district to keep our high risk employees or those who live with somebody who is high risk in a safe space. And that one yeah, additional- belongs in a clan clap, Mara. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge win. <laughs> Thank you. And that, that one teacher that you are saying is not within the year. So that is somebody who's already fully vested, but is just retiring earlier than they anticipated, which in, in that case is that one package that says we would give them 40% of their last year's salary, which, um, you know, that you don't have to worry about all the benefits package too. So if you're talking about someone who makes say $70,000 last year, that would cost us maybe 25 to 30,000 for that one. Um, and then the others, maybe in that same kind of ballpark, depending on what Vistas tells us, we have to contribute um, to buy them out. Um, so, yeah, and then if we have a, a position that we don't fill, that's probably $100,000 worth of savings right there. So I, I don't think we're talking about a huge net uh, amount of money. Other questions from the board? Jill? Um, Grant, you keep saying, is it Dister's? I'm, I'm not familiar with what that means, I'm sorry. No, that's that's fine, I apologize. The uh, Vistas with a V, it's the Vermont State Teacher Retirement System. So teachers are part of that Vermont State Teacher Retirement System and they obviously want to be fully vested and if they're gonna leave. Um, and so we are offering to contribute whatever that, that shortfall is. If they're, maybe they, they use up their sick leave and they still have a month more to go to get to that vesting, then we would have to find out from visitors how much will it cost us to buy a month of service time. So that's what we're talking about. Thank you. And, and do we need to get their permission or do we have permission to do this without, if the board approves this, we can go forward with offering this to the teachers? Whose permission are you asking about, Joe? Anybody else's visitors or anybody else, or can we do this? Yeah, visitor, anybody can buy out the rest of visitors. So um, Pam Arnold did that last year. She bought a year, right? So we, you can do that through retirement. So you can buy whatever time is left. Um, with the teachers, if the board approves these two deals, we would make individual, you know, kind of MOUs with teachers that this is what the, the district is agreeing to do. This is what the teacher is agreeing to do. And um, as of this date, which is their retirement date, they are officially retired. Um, 
So essentially for the people who still have a year, we're allowing them to use their sick time in continuation for that year, which also, which will pay them a paycheck and will uh, put money into VISTAs for that time period. It might be helpful, um, may, maybe I should have done this earlier for the public to understand that the teacher's retirement system is a statewide program. It is not a district by district program. It's defined by state statute and the system has its own board and it's basically attached to the treasurer's office, the state treasurer's office and all of those rules and regulations of the retirement system are based on the state statute and they're enrolled in it and we're paying you know, a contribution for them um, as an employee of the district. So this is about helping them buy out, buy, buy out of that system. I think, did, did Anakin have a question, did I see? I did raise my hand, but I had the same question uh, Jill had about, you know, how have we talked to visitors and uh, you know, has this been done, done before? Yeah, and, and we've already talked to visitors a preliminary discussion about what this is and how we would go about it. Whenever I say we need permission, whenever we start talking about a specific teacher, how much time they've got left, how much it will cost to buy that time, that's where we need the employee, the teacher, to contact visitors and say, it's okay for you to talk to my employer about this so that we can get into the details of exactly how much money we're talking about and to go ahead and make those payments. Because right now the teacher pays a contribution and the district pays a contribution. Um, so this would basically um, be us paying both sides of that uh, to get them that time that they need. And we will know specifics once we have signed agreements and we ask the teacher to contact visitors and give us permission to talk to them, then we'll be able to do that. But we have already talked to visitors about the process what we're trying to do. And um, I don't think there's any kind of problems with, with what we have planned. Uh, uh, I got confused uh, there, Grant. You mentioned that we will be paying both sides of it. And then um, Libby, you mentioned that we'll use the sick time and they will get paid. Was So so the VISTAS contribution from the employee side um, wasn't isn't part of the, uh, um, the, the their salary? Is that? No, so, so it's kind of two pieces. So like if an employee has six months to go to get vested and they have enough sick time that they have maybe like four months worth of sick time, it would be as if they are still here working and they would make their contribution, would make ours like normal. But once they run out of any kind of accrued leave and they have nothing, then we would then pick up both sides as opposed to just the one side. So, so until, that's that time uh, remaining. Yeah, yeah, the time remaining until the yeah. until the sick leave um, uh, runs out. They they pay the contribution after it runs out. Yeah. Then we pay both sides of it. Yeah, right. yeah, and just to the point where it gets them to that date that they retire, they can retire with full full benefits. But then they they don't get. Are, are we paying the salary beyond the sick leave time? Uh, no, so the sick leave time is becomes the retirement date. Yes. Okay, makes sense. Is there, um, I, I know you've mentioned that there's five teachers identified. Would there be more than five teachers that would actually qualify for these? The way we wrote it is that you're, you have 25 years of service in Vermont public education. Um, and so that's a limited, I know the list of people who have served in that capacity. Um, and I have talked to every person who is close and those some who are not close um, who are considering it. So I'm I am pretty I'm pretty positive of that number. Of just the ability, because you know, we had some people who are about four years out from retirement and they talk to retirement and it's just not financially feasible for them to do. So um, I we're pretty confident in that number. Other questions? And Libby, did you say you you would need to fill these positions by the start of the school year? Some of them we would try to fill. We would post them. Um, that's not to say we can fill them. <laughs> Some of the positions are hard to fill. So um, we would try for some, 
And if we got a good candidate, then we would go for it. But um, I'm not, we have other plans. I think some we will fill. Yes, with a person who does not have as much experience as that. So it will be a person who does not make as large a salary. Um, we will have to, uh, we, we already have candidates for some of those positions just because we've been putting our feelers out. But um, others we will not try to fill this year um, because of either the position or because of the lack of what we know will be a lack of candidates because on a regular year, they wouldn't have a whole lot of candidates. I got another question. Um, the sick time in the normal case, if this employee would have retired, um, they get paid for the sick time. They, they cash in for the sick time. So, so, so we would have had to pay the sick time anyways, right? No, so by letting them use their sick time, Anakit, it's basically like saying we're letting you work. We're letting you work with a paycheck. So we're we're allow we're what it, what it's essentially saying is that I am part of our contract is that after five days of sick days, they have to give me a doctor's note that says they're actually sick, right? Um, and we can argue that, and we can send them to other doctors and all that kind of stuff. What we're essentially saying is I won't do that. You can take as much sick time in a row and continuation as you need to, to get to that doctor's note. So there isn't an expectation that you're working for that period of time. It's er, to get to that um, retirement date, sorry. Um, so there isn't an expectation that they will be working during that time, that they can take all of their sick time. So for instance, one person needs 85 days to get to her retirement date she has a hundred days of sick time. So she will use her entire sick time to get to that day 85. And at day 85, she will officially retire. We will no longer pay her. She will officially retire and get her full retirement benefits. And during that time, I won't ask her for a doctor's note. Yeah, I, I get that. The, the, the part that I was confused about is in this example, what happens to the, the those 15 days that nothing nothing we're not we don't have anything in our contract where we pay people sick time okay so and that's not written in either of these deals so nothing happens they just lose those sick those 15 days okay okay so it's not like that that this 85 days we would have had to pay anyways um if, no okay no. okay 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 Any other questions for us? Okay, so there's two, um, there are two options. We should probably have a motion for each one. Um, I'm looking, so the, I'm looking first at um, the one that's dated called the Early Retirement Incentive Agreement, dated August 12th, 2020. Um, and this one, let's see if I'm, if I'm understanding it right, uh, this is the one that applies if um, an employee would have been vested for a full pension no later than June 30th, 2021, correct? Yeah, sorry, Bridget, if you're waiting for a verbal, sorry. <laughs> okay, so is, there, um, is there a motion to approve the early retirement incentive agreement dated August 12th, 2020 between the Montpelier Roxbury uh, Public School District and the, um, and the union? So moved. Second? I'll second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, um, all the well, all those in favor will take roll. Anakit, aye. Jill, Jill, aye. Mara, aye. Jerry, aye. Um, going back to the other one. Um, the early retirement agreement, this applies to teachers with 25 years of experience in Vermont public education who wish to retire prior to the beginning of the 
2020 to 2021 school year. Um, this is also dated August 12th, 2020, and would be an agreement between um, the Montpelier Roxbury Public School District and the teachers union. Um, is there a motion to approve that agreement? So moved. Second. I'll second. Any further discussion? For all those in favor, I will take roll. Aniket? Aye. Jill? Aye. Mara? Aye. Jerry? Aye. Aye. Um, I realize we have a quorum, but there are only five of us. So just in case it matters for the record, I will record my vote as I on both votes so that we have five votes in favor. Normally the chair doesn't vote, but just in case, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you all. This is gonna be huge for these five employees and it's a, it's a good move for our district. Thank you for putting it together. Absolutely, yep. thanks for doing this. Union leadership was huge too. So can't, can't take all the credit on this one that Chris Garros was a big factor in, in making this happen. So thank you all, I really appreciate it. Thanks, well, thanks for, to the union and to you guys, many, much appreciated. And I'm glad that there was a path forward that was found. Yeah. Many really paths good. forward, it sounds like, that you've oh, that yeah, you've we have all of, Like I, uh, that's, <laughs> that's impressive. And I, um, I'm, I'm, I feel very grateful. I just want to express gratitude for getting to work with, um, for, uh, you know, the admin and the folks who work around you, because this is bananas times, which is a technical <laughs> term. And I'm, I'm deeply impressed with the way that it, you've done caretaking and responsibility in the same. Yeah, I promised them. They self-identified as high risk and I promised them that we'd make something work. And I think we have something that works for all of them um, who have identified as high risk. So we're, we're in a good spot right now in that regard. Um, still have to get people comfortable with coming in the building, some people, but we're, we're working on that too. So next week starts in service and we'll have a full update of what that looks like for y'all next week. Thanks. And, and really, you know, thanks to our teachers too. This is, this is unprecedented times to come back to the classroom and all of us here appreciate them so much for doing that. Yep. All right. Thanks all. All right. I need a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn the meeting. Second. All right, uh, take the roll. All those in favor, Anakit? Aye. Jill? Aye. Mara? Aye. Jerry? Aye. All right, we're done. Good night, everybody. And thank you. Grant, go home. Grant, go home. <laughs> <laughs>